there, friends. Uh, welcome back to Little Lab at Home with the Museum of Life and Science. I'm Peregrine, and we have uh, my friend Catalyst volunteer Caroline. Um, she's here with us today as well. And um, as always, we hope that you all will help lead our program with your thoughts and questions and ideas in the moderated chat box. That's how we'll be able to talk to you. Um, I think let's go ahead and, and get started with what we're talking about today, which is weather. Oh, so, so cool. Weather, what does it make you think of? You know, maybe do you know what weather is? Do you know about some types of weather? Do you know about um, types of weather that you've experienced or not experienced? What do you think? Ooh, we have a friend saying it makes them think of storms. So storms are a type thing. of weather. What about you, Caroline? What's some types of weather that you've experienced? Ooh, it's a good question. I like to think about uh, sunny or it's kind of a little bit extra heat. Sometimes we get a heat wave, they say. Maybe even wind. Is that perhaps contributing to weather? Sure. Yeah, for sure. I think when I think of weather, I often think of, of things happening like precipitation, we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, I heart, sometimes I don't think of a regular sunny day as being weather, but it is a type of weather. We have a yeah. friend from um, rain and we have another friend who's been um, really excited by the chance of snow. I know we had a few days yeah. ago they were saying maybe we'll have some, we'll see. It takes a surprising um, uh, kind of like number of factors to work together to make snow happen. Um, but it would be really excited if we, exciting if we could get some. So, so weather is a phenomenon, it's something that happens uh, on the earth uh, and on other planets too, but when we're talking about on the Earth, it's kind of this big movement of air and water and changes in temperature and pressure, which we're going to talk about a lot today, and it creates things, yeah, like like clear sunny days or kind of overcast colder days or fog or rain or snow or sleet or hail or tornadoes, or all kinds of different things. There's a lot of types of weather, and we're gonna talk about what causes weather. How so cool. When we're talking about the causes of weather, right, because we can talk about the effects of weather a lot, right? Mm -hmm. We can easily look out the window and describe the weather outside. Caroline, are, are you near a window that you could describe the weather outside uh, for us today? I am near a window. Now I'm here in Durham. And I'm looking out and I'm seeing just clear blue skies right now. Nothing too crazy. Does anyone else see any clouds or anything? Yeah, how's the weather where you are? I know when I was outside earlier, I saw the same thing. Very, very clear day, no clouds. Um, it was uh, fairly warm outside. I think it's uh, in the 50s today or it got just to 50. Definitely. It says our friends are experiencing some blue sky and no clouds in South Durham. No clouds where some of our other viewers are looking at either. Well, nice. Yeah, it's been a really nice day, especially because yesterday mm -hmm. was so overcast. Absolutely. So, let's talk about what causes these different types of weather. Um, I don't know if any of you were able to get a balloon. We said that that was optional, but I have one because I want to use it to talk about pressure and what pressure is. When I think about what pressure is, I think about um, a force. I think about pushing. Right? Mm -hmm. Something being under pressure means it's under stress or it's something that's being pressed together, right? Um, when we're talking about pressure and weather, mm -hmm. we're talking about pressure on the air or air pressure, right? Yeah. It's all, uh, even, even air, right, uh, is made of teeny, teeny tiny little pieces called molecules, and those molecules are being, you know, kind of compressed or, or are a little further apart depending on the pressure. So um, I want us to, if you have a balloon, to go ahead and, and blow that balloon up just a little. I'm going to blow mine up. Okay. I've got my balloon here. There's air outside of my balloon, and now there's air inside of the balloon. The air inside is high pressure air because I put a whole bunch of air, I went and then I blew in some air and now it's trapped in this little space. 
I'm in a much larger room than this balloon. So the air has plenty of space. There's kind of low pressure. Um, think about if we were thinking about molecules being people. If there's a big enough space, people aren't going to be pressed together. They're going to have plenty of room. So there's low pressure. But inside of this balloon, that's like taking a whole room full of people and pushing them inside of a tiny closet, right? Wow, yeah. They'd be under a lot of pressure, right, Caroline? Stuffed in there, absolutely. That would not be a lot of fun. You'd probably be kind of uncomfortable. You'd feel pressed against each other. There'd be a lot of pressure. And I don't know about you, but if I were in a tiny space with a lot of people, I would want to get out of there. What about Same you? Same here, definitely. So what do you think will happen, friends, if I let the air out of this balloon? Right now it's trapped in a high pressure environment. What will happen if I let it go? What do you think? Do you guys think it's gonna hang there or try and escape from the tight room? <laughs> what do we think? I think let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let the balloon go and see where it goes. Ready? Go. <laughs> So when I uh, released the air from the balloon, it was so excited to get out of there, right? It rushed out of a little opening here uh, into the lower pressure environment all around me. So um, when we talk about pressure and how things move, things move from high pressure to low pressure. Right? We can say, we can think of it a, a couple ways. We can say that the molecules want to go fill up an empty space, or we could say that it flows um, because all of those uh, molecules at high pressure want to have some lower pressure, want to be able to relax again. Mm -hmm. So weather is like this too, giant masses of, of air on the earth uh, are being different temperatures. Um, we have uh, them moving at different speeds due to changes in pressure. And those pressure changes are what create weather, right? So the direction that the wind is blowing, for example, is that big mass of air rushing from a high pressure situation to a lower pressure situation. So we have a lot of things that affect weather, but it's essentially differences in, in pressure, as well as temperature and, um, and precipitation or uh, water. So if we want to predict the weather, right, because we can observe the weather, we can look at it, but how can we predict it? What about you, friends? If you're thinking, I want to go outside for a walk, I want to know if I want to need to put a coat on, do I need an umbrella? How do we figure that out? What do you think? How do you figure it out, Caroline? Well, in the classic way of today, I look at my phone. But the big question is, how does my phone figure it out? Oh, so there's information on your phone, maybe on TV. I have a friend here saying um, you could look out the window. That's a good way to predict the weather for sure. We have someone saying weather reporters, ooh, can use machines in space to predict wow. the weather. That's right. We have so many different machines, some of them being weather satellites in space that gather information. They can see right from really far away, so they can kind of see these big movements of pressure happening. Sometimes there's machines that are a little bit closer to the ground um, that we can use to gauge the weather, especially more locally, right? So there's lots of different kinds of machines that can gauge things like temperature, like pressure, like wind, like precipitation, all these different things. We can also make our own type of machine that can tell when the pressure is changing. We're going to be making our own barometer today and uh, we're gonna do that using a couple of ingredients here um, that we have. Caroline, will you tell us what you have to make your own barometer? I'm gonna write that in the chat. Absolutely. So I have here this really cool jar that you, is covered right now by very sticky plastic wrap. I also happen to have somewhere around here a straw, as well as I have a piece of paper for us to measure. If you guys have lined paper, that's great. If you don't, just a paper with a line on it would be really ideal. I have some scissors. And then importantly, to help us stick stuff down, I have a rubber band. Perfect. That looks great. Looks like you have some tape as well. Tape, yep. Perfect. Also have tape. And here's my straw. Took me oh. a moment to find it. <laughs> Perfecter. 
perfect. I'm gonna go to my experiment cam so I can show you what I have as well. Similar thing, I've got some paper here. I've got my scissors, I've got some tape over here. I've got a marker. Um, now, this is not nice cling wrap like Caroline has. I have just a thin film of plastic, um, so I can use this or I could use my balloon. And since I was using my balloon earlier, I thought I might use this, but we'll go through the steps for both. To make it, the first thing that you need is a cup or a jar. So both Caroline and I have our cups or jars here and um, ours are clear, but yours doesn't really need to be clear. There's no reason it has to be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create kind of a closed environment. We wanna seal up our jar in a certain way. We wanna go ahead and take your, either your plastic wrap or if you're using um, a balloon, you're gonna to wanna to kind of stretch it over the top of your jar. If you're using a balloon like me, you'll need to take your scissors and cut it a little bit like that. If you're using the plastic wrap, make sure to just stretch it really tight across it. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and take my now stretchy uh, membrane here, my stretchy thing, and I'm gonna put it over the top of my jar. And it's true that we do want it to be very tight on the sides, but it can have a little bit of slack on top. It can have a little bit because uh, we want to have this stretchy membrane, this stretchy thing here that can change with the differences in pressure. So you're right, like Caroline says, it needs to be super tight around here. Um, but this can have just a little bit, it should be able to push if you push down gently on it. A little bit of bounce. You have a rubber band, you can secure it around there. If you want to use any of your tape to make sure it stays on, I might do that. Great idea. We want to make sure that this environment stays closed. So I've got my jar. We have our jars here. Our jars are now closed. So the air inside of it is now trapped. And this trapped kind of sample of air is what's gonna help us uh, see the pressure changes outside of the jar. To do that, we're gonna need um, something to kind of serve as our little meter, our little kind of stick that's gonna uh, show us those different changes because we might not be able to see just by looking at it if uh, there's a difference in the top here. But what you need is a straw or you could use something like a bamboo skewer if you need it. Um, something that's kind of long and something that's really light, right? Because the changes that we're gonna be seeing or that we will see um, when we are observing them are probably not gonna be huge changes. Um, so we want something that, that can move very easily, that's very light. I want you to go ahead and take, um, if you have a straw, one thing that might help you when you're going to be looking at your meter is to create a little point. So I'm just going to create this into a little arrow. So I'm going to cut it with my scissors like that. Oh, Nothing fancy. Let's see, Caroline. Oh, that looks perfect. Awesome. All we're doing is we're creating a little point. That's just to help us uh, read our, our meter a little bit better. Now, we will take our stick and point side out, we want to take the very end of it and we want to put it at about the center of our, uh, our little stretchy part right here. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead, can you, oh we can even see that better. And then you're going you're to want to go ahead and tape it onto there. We want it to be very secure, so I'm going to get some tape here. We want it so it's kind of like just pointing straight across. We don't want it really pointing up or pointing down. And I'm gonna do mine like that. So just about in the middle, very end of my stick, my straw, and I'm taping it kind of gently enough that it's not going to point up or down yet. Right, it's just kind of pointing straight across. What about yours, Caroline? That looks great. Same here, not, kind of, not up or down yet, but pretty much just straight across. That looks perfect. So for our last step in our barometer, um, we're going to need 
to um, be able to tell what it means if this thing moves. Um, so we're going to take our, um, our paper and our writing utensil. And what you want to do is, there we go. When it stands up, it should be about, right, you should draw a little line all across your paper about uh, in the very center, kind of where your straw is pointing. So mine's going to be about right here. Oh, mine is already moving. Oh, yours is already kind of moving a little bit. That's interesting. So now that we've got our line, uh, what we want to do is uh, kind of create uh, our, our little kind of picture of what type of weather usually comes with, oops, that was an interesting looking raindrop. <laughs> what kind of weather usually comes with it uh, pointing up or down? And we'll talk about why it means that in just a second here. There we go. I'll do one more. So we have now um, kind of a paper that's split in half and on the top there's a sun, on the bottom there's rain. And that has to do with whether this is pointing up or down. Remember when we were talking about pressure? So inside of here, we have some air that's trapped. Now, if the air all around it, right, let's say that there's um, high pressure all around it. That means that the air that's in this high pressure outside of it will want to get in here where there's less pressure. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna try to get in there. It's gonna try and, it's, uh, so what's gonna happen is it will kind of press it down a little bit. It'll press down our, uh, our stretchy membrane. So what happens is that it will start to point up. High pressure is associated with good weather, clear weather, kind of like this little sun that I drew. So if ours is pointing up, it's likely that there is a high pressure front, which means good weather. Now, if we see that our barometer is pointing low, that's because the air all around is now at a lower pressure, meaning the air that's trapped in here wants to get out. It wants to get into the lower pressure environment. So it's gonna try to get out of the jar, meaning it will kind of push it up. And as it pushes it up, uh, it's going to, well, like this rather, it's going to kind of push it um, so that the point is down a little bit more, right? So these changes in pressure that can help us predict the weather, right? Like, like low pressure tends to mean um, kind of cloudier weather or possibly even rainier uh, weather with more precipitation. Um, these changes in pressure that our jar can show us is one way to predict the weather. How cool. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my cam here. So I will say if we want to um, more accurately look at the weather, you're gonna want it to be outside because um, sometimes the pressure is different indoors versus outdoors. So if we wanna know the outdoor weather, it's great to be able to put it right outside. Maybe you could even put it right outside of a window so you could kind of peek out at it and see whether it was pointing uh, up or down to see what the pressure situation outside of your, uh, outside of your house might be. That's one thing that can help you predict the weather. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I, it's, such a, it's, it's such a simple way um, to, to see changes in the weather. It's a great way to uh, kind of practice making predictions, which is a really important early science skill. Um, we can use tools to measure phenomenon and then, um, then make guesses based on that information and then see if we guessed correctly or incorrectly. Absolutely. It's a bit of prediction testing. Yeah, I think it's, and it's a great thing to do, right, right, whether, whether you're right or wrong, right, you'll be able to, to know uh, your results because you're, you're testing it by guessing and then seeing how the weather goes. That's great. Absolutely. All right, friends, that is all the time that we have for today. I hope that the weather is fair uh, wherever you are and whatever kind of weather you like. I hope you'll be able to check it out using uh, your barometer. Um, next week, 
we will have uh, a lab at home special uh, scientist spotlight where we're going to be talking to a scientist who studies lemur brains. So we're going to be looking at real lemur brains next time. It's going to be so exciting. Wow. I'm excited, Caroline. Uh, and then the week after that, lab, little lab at home will be back and we'll be looking at ocean currents and things that affect how the ocean of our oceans of our planet move. So lab at home next week, then the week after that, we will have little lab again. I hope that we'll see you all there.